All right, Terry, thanks for having us here at MWC Barcelona. Let's start with what Lotus Flare DNO Cloud is and what service uh, does it provide for your CSP clients? All right, DNO stands for Digital Network Operator. It is a, um, a monetization, commerce, and digital enablement platform that we specifically built for telecom operators. The, the reason we decided to build DNO 10 years ago was at the time we noticed that there were a lot of internet companies that was really good at building highly scalable software cheaply and then operating them cheaply. We wanted to bring that practice to the telecom world. DNO at its core is, has all the capabilities you would expect from a DSS and more. Capab data capability, for example, is built directly into DNO. Uh, that's a shortcoming that we saw in the legacy BSS. Digital capabilities um, and, 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 uh, and other capabilities, again, was a shortcoming, and we built that directly into DNO. The other thing that we did with DNO is that it's it's cloud native, meaning that we take full advantage of the cloud. This gets you things like be able to continue to deploy. For all of our customers, in fact, we deploy on a weekly basis. That means they're getting new features on a weekly basis. That means their consumers getting, uh, getting new features on a weekly basis. Excellent. And of course, some exciting partnerships already with the likes of T-Mobile and, and DT in terms of API marketplace and getting them set up. What are some considerations that CSPs need to have when getting set up? And how easy is it to, to go through that process? Yeah, um, API is an interesting kind of new opportunity that have shown up over the last few years. Uh, we have been in that space since the very, very beginning. Um, a lot of people think, hey, API is easy to monetize. I just need to get an API gateway in, in, in front of it and, and I'm good. Uh, in fact, there's, that's not true. There's a lot more uh, you need in order to monetize APIs properly. We have designed a reference architecture and then we use DNO as the foundation to deliver that architecture. Uh, there's a few key pieces. One, uh, we call it a translation layer. Um, and then above that, you have your exposure layer. You have things like monetization module. You have consent. You have API gateway. So we have put that whole package together as a easy button to press if someone wants to launch API uh, business. Um, the other thing I would say about API business is that we have been working quite a bit with T-Mobile and DT. In fact, we power a lot of their API uh, business on the back end. Um, there's obviously things that are confidential. I can't say too much about the work we do with T-Mobile, but um, one thing I would say, the learning is that it's a very much evolving space. There's a lot of changes. So one of the things that T-Mobile really appreciates about us is the, our ability to be agile and to be able to deal with these, cha these changes. When new opportunities come in that space, we're able to help them capture it very, very quickly. Great, and of course, uh, the DNO is multi-tenant. It can uh, address several parts of the network. So maybe can you talk to us a little bit about what are those network elements that can be monetized and thinking about eSIM, how can those CSPs leverage that to, to wholesale their network and bring in some extra revenue? Right. Um, so DNO is multi-tenant, and the way to think about DNO is that it is a, we talked about this earlier, it's a monetization engine. We can sit on top of any CSP assets. So that could be wireless, could be fixed broadband, could be third-party services that they brought in, bring, bring in as part of partnerships. It could also be um, APIs or data that they're trying to monetize. Once we integrate on top of those assets, we allow them to launch different lines of business. And this could be a single instance of DNO um, and that then you create tenants on top of that allows you to launch these different lines of business. Specifically about eSIM, I'll talk about that's a more recent phenomenon that has happened. Um, there's a few things that's happening in space. You know, eSIM is not a new technology. It's been around for 10 years. But what really has kind of caught consumer interest was when Apple began to support eSIM. That's when consumers became more aware. That's when, that's when they started to adopt eSIM. There is, over the last three years, there's a whole bunch of eSIM kind of consumer players that have come to the space to address the eSIM travel opportunity. Um, and they are all looking to buy data from CSPs so that they can resell to the consumer. And it turns out that uh, a lot of the existing wholesale platforms are not sufficient to be able to support these eSIM resellers. 
And that's when we came in and we saw that opportunity. We spoke to some of the CSPs who had this need. Very quickly, we were able to adopt DNO to support that use case. Um, so that's on the eSIM. The other thing that I want to mention is that um, this is in the MVNO space. There's also kind of this new, um, new breed of MVNOs coming to the market. This is, again, in the last three years. These MVNOs are essentially celebrities and influencers, or they're looking to leverage their brand uh, to make money. And they don't actually want to operate a MVNO, or they don't have the knowledge to operate an MVNO. So they need a really easy button to press to be able to launch and operate. And again, that's when kind of T-Mobile recognized this opportunity. So they launched a program called Why Now? Is to, that's their program to serve these new breed of MVNOs. And we are the technology provider. Again, I think it's DNO is the foundation that we build this Why Now project on. Well, thank you so much, Terry, and uh, have a great show.